How do you like this hire for Kyler Murray? Better work. You know, this is a uphill battle or uphill climb for both Kyler Murray and Jonathan Gannon. We know Kyler got his money mm. last year, okay? Jonathan Gannon is stepping into a situation in a new general manager in Monty Austin Fort. This roster is not nearly as good as it was two years ago when they went to the playoffs against the Rams. He's got to get healthy. I think the biggest challenge for Jonathan Gannon is getting Kyler Murray to believe you as the head coach – can, also, can allow me to be kind of myself, but demand that I get better to be the quarterback of this football team. It ain't little games anymore. It's time to grow up in this league. That's real. It's time to grow up, and Jonathan Gannon's got to be the leader that pulls that out of Kyler Murray. I saw assistant DB coach, DB coach, and then defensive coordinator of a really good unit that had success this year in Philadelphia. We'll, to your point, Dan, we'll find out how you manage men. Like, that's what head coaching is about. Like, we know that these guys have acumen X's and O's, Y's, and we understand that they may, they may have success in other areas. But the experience that I thought was needed in Arizona was a guy to come in with a little bit of stature. And I'm not sure. Like, this, this hire, obviously Arizona likes Jonathan Gannon, and Jonathan Gannon did a good job with the Philadelphia Eagles this year from a defensive standpoint. But I thought this job should have been dedicated to somebody that's got some cachet and stock in this league. Because to your point, D.O., Jonathan Gannon's number one job is to get Kyler Murray to be one of the 53 guys, like we talked about all season long. I want to see how that relationship materializes. You can get better on defense, but if your quarterback ain't listening to you or don't respect the people in the building, it don't matter how good you're on that side of the ball. Well, I think that's a piece of it, too, which is why I thought Lou Anarumo, who was a little older coach, had been in locker rooms uh, for a bit of a time longer than Jonathan Gannon, would be a good person for this job, where you get someone that was a former head coach, and maybe none of those guys actually wanted these jobs. But here is what strikes me. You have Jonathan Gannon, who does a good job, but who is thoroughly outcoached in the second half of this football game in the Super Bowl, and Andy Reid shows you that he isn't necessarily up to the level that you need to be to win a championship. And then we see on the other side a guy like Eric Bieniemy, who's been to five AFC championships, also won two Super Bowls, and he's not necessarily up to snub to lead a locker room according to the executives, according to the owners. Let's go back to last year with a guy like Raheem Morris, who was a young head coach in Tampa Bay and now worked his way on both offense and defense, and you actually win the Super Bowl with your defense coming up with the main stops against the Cincinnati Bengals, who were seemingly unstoppable last year to win the Super Bowl. I don't want to be the guy that always has to bring up that black coaches are continually overlooked. I'm the guy that wants to bring up what are these other coaches doing that the African American and minority coaches aren't doing that's allowing them to get jobs because it can no longer be about winning championships because neither Shane Steichen nor Jonathan Gannon did that. But here we are two days after the game that they lost by the way, and they now have head coaching jobs. All I'm asking is make it make sense. Mm. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.